Hi guys, my name is um, Shem Kalele and uh, this presentation is about my third year project which involves designing uh, a 1300 megahertz power amplifier for amateur radio application. So in this presentation, I will, I will talk about the following design goals, amplifier um, theory, load pool and source pool simulation, match networks, uh, small signal and large signal simulation results, which I, I obtained, and uh, also the stability of the circuit. And I'll, I'll, I'll also show you the layout, which I'm st still working on. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, so uh, basically, um, um, the, the, um, the aim of the project is uh, it's, uh, to design a, a power amplifier to to um, drive an antenna for an amateur radio application. A, um, 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 a group within the UK is setting up uh, a, a, a bunch of beacons, both re receivers and transmitters, and Cardiff's Amateur Society would best like to take part into their action. And um, my part of the project is uh, to design the, the power amplifier to be used in the transmitter. And here are the uh, design goals. So basically we are aiming for an uh, operating frequency of 1300 megahertz, a gain of um, 15 dB, output power of 25 watts, and it's a narrowband amplifier, so it's only 85 megahertz bandwidth and an efficiency of um, 50% or um, higher. So before I start, I'll just go through the basics of uh, power amplifiers, which I'm sure all of you are aware of. So what is a power amplifier? So basically a, a power amplifier is a circuit that uh, uses DC power to amplify a small signal to a larger signal. And basically it uh, uh, consists of an active device, biasing network, and input and output uh, matching networks. So uh, there are many classes of uh, power amplifiers, but the most common, it's uh, class A, class B, and uh, class AB amplifier. As you can see, class A amplifiers that 50% efficiency in, in theory, and um, class B amplifier, they are 80% efficiency in theory, and we have class A, B amplifier, which is more or less between class A and B, which is uh, between 50 and 70% uh, efficiency. Uh, class A has a <coughs> conduction angle of 360 and, and, um, degrees, which basically tells you how much of the RF waveform conducts. Um, so, so basically, uh, class A has a higher gain. Uh, even though it's uh, got a low efficiency, its gain it's, it is still quite high. And then, you know, class B has a very low gain but high efficiency. So basically, for our design, I chose to go for a class A, B operation because it's a compromise between class A and B, between the gain and the uh, efficiency of the device. And here basically I've just got uh, waveforms of uh, different classes of amplifier. As, as you can see, class A is basically linear uh, because the output is not distorted. And then we have class B uh, amplifier which is more or less because it's clipped. So basically half of the uh, cycle is, um, is amplified while the other half is uh, clipped. And then class A, B of operation, it's uh, between the, um, the two. So uh, now on to my project. So the first thing with the project was choosing their device. For my project, I chose to go for the 25 watt gun transistor because it uh, meets their the, um, design requirement. It's basically got an operating voltage 
of 28 volts and uh, it's uh, it's it's got really high power uh, torrents and it's got an operating frequency up to six gigahertz and uh, it's um easy to match to as well because it's got really high input and output impedance and basically this graph uh, it's the um, DC simulation which I did in uh, ADS to basically just show the operation of their um, uh, device. So then um, the next part of the uh, design was designing biasing um, uh, network. So with a uh, biasing network you can either use um, chalk inductors which then will um, block off high uh, frequency at a, a very wide range of uh, frequencies. But then for my design, I chose to basically to go for a uh, quarter wave because they're mostly used for narrowband uh, applications as well. And then as, as you can see, at the frequency I'm targeting of 1.3, Gigahertz, uh, basically, it's uh, uh, it uh, basically it's almost sees an, an open circuit. So meaning, there's no uh, RF signal at that frequency going to the DC, which uh, can uh, cause issues and um, problems with the um, amplifier. So in uh, so in so basically in um, so uh, basically. I use load pool um, to uh, to uh, find the uh, load impedance that would optimize uh, uh, um, their device uh, because because um, because in in uh, order to maximize the, the 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 power transfer and efficiency, the transistor needs to be matched, and then you find the gain power added efficiency and and distortion varies a lot depending on the um, load impedance. So um, I basically use a tool in uh, ADS uh, called a Smith chart to then design the um, input and and um, and um, output matching networks. And um, this were my initial uh, results with um, uh, my design. Uh, so for there, it uh, shows that you know the um, amplifier works because I've got a gain of uh, 27 dB and, and higher. And then um, S11, the return loss, it is below 20 dB. But then I was having issues with, uh, with uh, S22 because it is 3.6 dB and and it should be below 0 dB and um, this was because my uh, device wasn't stable so then I uh, I uh, had to find a way to stabilize the device which uh, uh, which I'll talk about later but uh, stability I'll skip that part yeah so then to uh, to the stabilize the device I basically just added uh, this network at the gate, which then kills the gain and um, which then helps to stabilize the device. As uh, uh, um, basically, as, as you can see, the stability factor tells you whether the device is stable or not stable. If, um, basically, if it's above uh, uh, one, that means it's stable and then if it's uh, below one, it is not stable. So before it wasn't stable because at the frequency I'm waking at, it is uh, below one. So which shows it is not stable. But after adding the uh, network, you are basically, you can see that it is now more stable because now we are uh, getting um, three uh, stability factor which then shows you the, uh, that uh, the device is uh, stable. And then from there I did uh, harmonic balance simulation. So basically this um, just shows the uh, voltage inputs and then outputs uh, to basically show that uh, the 
amplify uh, its uh, it, uh, its waking. So with the simulation, basically it uh, it basically shows that an um, as in a, a, an efficiency of of uh, sixty seven percent is possible, and and a gain of um, fifteen dB as well is achievable, which basically meets the uh, design requirements. And then after that, basically, it was just about now changing those ideal components to then real components. And then uh, basically, uh, then it was just to optimize their device by just tweaking the values, which uh, then I did. And um, that's my um, final uh, circuit. So basically on the top, which uh, you, you can see very, very clearly, uh, on, on top basically here, we got the uh, bias network and then the input and, and output matching network. And um, that's basically the small signal analysis, which then shows um, the gain. The one in blue basically, it's the um, gain when I use the chalk inductor as uh, to uh, bias my uh, um, network. And then the one in um, red, it's uh, when I use the, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, what did I use? A transmission line, <laughs> uh, quite a wave, uh, to then bias my, my uh, device. And, and uh, this, this just shows the return loss of the uh, machine network. And uh, that's just a large uh, signal simulation, which uh, basically shows us the amplifier uh, works uh, fine because my um, M was, uh, you know, an, uh, an output of 25 watts, and which that shows that, you know, I was able to um, uh, achieve my um, design goals. And this right here, it's the layout I'm working on, on uh, designing in a layout in ideas. Uh, that's just the input and uh, output of the device and uh, the bias network and yeah and basically this is just a, a zoomed in uh, to basically show where the device will sit and uh, there it's the stability uh, network and now so basically for this semester the only thing left for me is um, now to work on the EM simulation which then will just show how the device will work once I actually finish uh, beating the device. And then get it, get it made, manufactured, build the circuit, and then final tests. And that was it. So any questions?